Hi, Carol here, and my grandson is joining us for just a minute. Um, I want to talk about a few things. One, a mixed media piece, and that's what my three-year-old grandson is doing for us. As I paint my nails, he's painting a watercolor page. Uh, he had a sleepover with his Nana and he wanted to bring home um, some artwork for the fridge. I put this at the beginning of the tutorial uh, while I just explained for just a minute. He's so sweet. Uh, he has, uh, you can see the band-aid on his arm. Well, every time he comes to our house, he, um, <laughs> he'll find a spot that he can call a boo-boo for me to put a colored band-aid on it. I just think it's so cute and um, yeah so <laughs> every time I look at this yeah and so he just having a blast he's just spraying on and he's just enjoying the color burst and the fun and the shaking and the spraying so anyway we'll move right along to this project I'm using 12 by 12 metallic we are memory keepers uh, paper pad after my grandson did that uh, watercolor piece, I was inspired to do a 12 by 12 um, layout. Yes, after I have a little bit of Coca-Cola there. And uh, the weather here has been really, really hot. Boy, oh boy, I had to add ice cubes into it. <laughs> so here um, with that paper, I'm trying to set up this piece of cardboard. Now this cardboard comes with 12 by 12 cardstock orders that you get. It's the back page of cardboard so it's the perfect consistency for doing a layout. And these round corrugated plates came actually with a set of plates you know in between that um, in the box of the you know, place settings that you buy, each one individually, and I have saved them. I've had them forever. And you know I like to build on texture. So as texture is my theme, I really didn't know where I was going yet. I'll let you know as soon as I get there. I just knew I wanted to add quite a bit of color, and I was thinking I was going to use this layout as a scenery layout. And I'm taking the distress, the new distress oxides there. I have them right above me um, that you're watching. So they were the closest thing to me. And I wanted to tuck it in the round edges there. So I'm just adding the oxide inks, you know, right on and um, not wasting any time to add color, just smooshing it all over this. Uh, paper and I'm using the backdrop as a spill sheet kind of like the 12 by 12 board. Everything I do it really does save you from having to wipe up because you're going to cover that cardboard anyway. So uh, first of all here I'm just concentrating on getting some coverage. Now this has script behind it this uh, piece of paper here. So that's not really too bad and I added this strip in the middle and uh, the saying there it says life's little moments uh, underneath there um, and I was trying to build off of that but then changed halfway, <laughs> changed my uh, momentum. Let me reword that and say I changed my strategy not my momentum it's you know it's like um, with inspiration this is this whole 12 by 12 page by the way it's because I lacked inspiration and uh, I'll explain that later in the video here I'm taking dollar store acrylic paint and turquoise you know my dollar store where nothing's a dollar this these were I have a white one and a turquoise one that are just nice because they're not uh, you can see through them and that makes it really nice when you're doing something like this you want to see underneath. I used my PH Martin and ran it across the top edge the ink and then sprayed it with water and right here I have the PH Martin white that is fabulous for making clouds and I'm taking a baby wipe and just pouncing it put I'll put some more on there and I'm going to just pounce it and then after I do that you to get that uh, far away look 
You just add some gray and the oxidings work wonderful for this. Uh, the gray and a lilac color and pounce it underneath the white because you already have the blue um, oxide ink and the um, PH Martin ink coming down so you get that far away look and then leave a lot of globs of the white where you want it to look like sun rays or you know hitting it. it it really does give it a nice effect and just pouncing it with baby wipe wipes is awesome so here I was thinking to myself let's move on here I attacked this uh, piece with absolutely inspiration minus I just didn't know whether I was coming or going and I've been like that for I don't know since I lost that footage <laughs> on my last tutorial isn't that pathetic but really um, I can't say that's to blame, but you get busy, life gets in the way. Here's a really dark navy uh, PH Martin ink that I'm putting down the side here. And this is where you can tell I'm just not quite sure what I'm going to do because of that corrugated strip going across on the upper uh, two-thirds of the page uh, and the clouds. I thought, okay, I'm going to stop for a minute here and I'm going to regroup. I'm going to cover the back and I used this gold heart paper in the metallic collection. Uh, they may still have this. I think I got it last year at Michael's. I'm not sure. But it is called, it's from We Are Memory Keepers um, and it's called Metallics. One thing about doing a 12 by 12 spread, if you're lacking inspiration or as they say, your mojo, whatever, if you just can't seem to, you know, pull yourself together on a project, I find the larger the project, um, the easier it is to pull your, um, you know, your artistic whatever together and uh, concentrate on a larger spread than a small card or something smaller. This to me really gave me room to spread as far as, you know, wondering uh, what I was going to use, not worrying that it had to have, you know, this sentiment, that sentiment, whatever. It just helped me to, I don't know, find common ground. Like, you know, everybody can make clouds. Everybody can put a background. You can add inks and uh, globs of this, that, and the other. Talk about globs. I'm putting uh, teardrop teardrops can you believe that uh, raindrops yeah I probably was thinking teardrops while I was doing it because when you see later on what I ended up putting on this you're going to uh, laugh at it because it just made perfect sense actually and now we need to get some mixed media tearing and ripping here so I just grabbed some pieces with my uh, little knife here and tore it off because that's what this mixed media stuff is all about, you know. Just uh, relaxing. I'm actually having fun on this so far. Yes. And then I'm taking the goober guts out of all of these little raindrops. And notice I only put them right there because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I turned it over and cut off the excess just so that it was... Uh, not so ragged looking because I am going to put, add to it. And up until now, I still wasn't sure what I was going to do. <laughs> That's the beauty of mixed media. I knew all of a sudden it had to be pan pastels. I'm going to work with pan pastels. And before I thought of that, I knew I was going to do the Jane Davenport large face stamp. And working with pan pastels, you don't have to have a lot. I just wanted to show you. See, these are from the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. Uh, they were $2 a piece, these acrylic uh, cases. They're wonderful. I, I, you know, I bought a lot of these little uh, containers and those little innards there so I could put stuff like that. And now I'm getting my dusting and cleaning in because these were in a cupboard. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to use my little memento inks because it has a light tone, mid tone, and a dark tone. And I'm going to use the face stamp. So you want to have skin tones. Grab any inks. You 
don't need any particular inks to uh, paint, you know, a body, face, whatever you do. Skin tones, let me say that. On skin tones, a light tone, medium, and dark, and you're set. I did the same thing with the pan pastels. And you have to work with what you have. These are the only pan pastels I have. Uh, I picked them up, one of each color, when I was at Buffalo Stamp and stuff. I say one of each color. It was one of each color that was at the store at the time. And I haven't added to the collection. I just work with what I have there. And I had a pink and a red for the cheeks. A white so that I could uh, contour. A yellow, beige, and brown. And that was it. And here I'm just picking some sponges, a couple of sponges. And then we are going to stamp that. With pan pastels, all you have to do is wipe the sponge off. It doesn't have to be a pan pastel particular sponge. Any sponge will do. Anything that you can smooth onto your paper. And, and also, I was cleaning up. Look at that. It had a whole lot of pan pastel dust in there. And I thought, why not? Might as well clean this. <laughs> And this was at the dollar store too. This tutorial is more of a relaxation tutorial. That's what I try to do with my tutorials is make you want to uh, be inspired, to take chances, to just reach out in your artistic ability. We're not all artists. I'm not. I mean, there are artists. Yeah, I'm grabbing my chair so I can uh, relax. I'm grabbing the stamp here. I probably said that already. In an edit, you never know what you just said. You keep stopping and starting, right? And I'm looking at it like you're looking at it. And the reason why these little mementos worked out well for me is I could hang on to them to stamp. So uh, I used the chocolate brown instead of black. And that way it gives me room for error. And uh, I stamped it here. And notice she's got a corrugated forehead. <laughs> Who cares, right? She has a corrugated forehead. That's mixed media. Texture, texture, texture. Um, it's like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. But for the crafter, it's texture, texture, texture. Don't you sometimes get sick of hearing it when I put a video up? But it's so true. With anything, if you can build some texture, you are on your way to some really luscious goodness. I also want to apologize if you hear my computer kind of making that sound. That's the best I could do to mimic it. It's it overheats after a while. <laughs> Gets tired of listening to me. But anywho, I'm taking out this beautiful Jane Davenport pen. This, oh. It, this is, you know when you watch other tutorials other than mine, you hear people say, you know, what they think of these things, and they're going on and on and on. And if they're going on about Jan, Jane Davenport, they're absolutely right. They're beautiful. I'm adding hair, individual hair, with this beautiful ink pen. It lets out just the right amount of ink. And because I sped it up, you don't see all the time. It was... Uh, Eight hours of video I brought down to 53 minutes so I had to speed it up at certain points and I put the individual hairs so nicely on there I wish you could see them it actually looked like an eyebrow and then I took the end of this uh, pan pastel sponge and uh, the beauty of pan pastel may I say this I didn't have to do that but you can erase it with an eraser and take it right up that is so nice and um, I'm just doing a bit of placement you'll find I wrote some of the words that were underneath on the underneath paper there if you see some writing that's why I got out the ink pen I'm going to do a lot of coloring as far as um, under colors I wanted to get rid of quite a few of those hearts and if you want to know how inexperienced I am at doing facial features and things um, I was feeling my face. <laughs> okay, where's my ear? And I was coming down, I was touching my eye, and I'm sliding my hand across. And then as I was drawing the ear, you know, you don't want the ear down around the mouth. Um, you know, unless you're doing a portrait and their ear is down around their mouth, <laughs> then you could do it. But I tried to make it as, um, you know, uh, what did they say, like original? Uh, make it look like a face and right now yeah and I'm working with uh, corrugated forehead uh, 
underneath their nose there's a strip of paper oh yeah we're getting into some major stuff here yes my prisma pencils are coming out i'm going to use those and the markers of jane davenport butter beautiful i love this and getting this supplies at Michael's is awesome because you get to use your coupon. And everything I'm using, I'm giving it a 10 thumbs up. Her products are as beautiful as people say. And you get the detail in there. The way I've got the, yeah, look at this right now. Isn't that cute? Yes, and the um, it works your... Uh, I don't know what to say. It's not your talent because everybody grows, you know. I wish I could just sit down and draw a face and contour it and paint it and blah, blah, blah without any hesitation. But no, I have to work at it. I wanted to say here, this is the white dollar store acrylic paint. That's so nice and see-through. Just acrylic white, it says. It was $2.00. And I'm just going to lighten it up so that I can darken it up again. That's the beauty of doing facial features, you know. Um, I love to see somebody that puts up a tutorial. Um, and, and you know, oh, look at this. Oh, I love that I brought the eye down. I brought the lid down by doing this beautiful 60s eyeliner. I just love that look. And then I took my... I think it's a Pentel ink pen. It's pre-filled. You don't have to fill it. And uh, I could have used Jane's ink pen as well, but I wanted to test this one out. It has uh, little fiber hairs with that the ink, you know, at the end. It It's for, well, I bought it for brush letting, but boy, it just makes that eyeliner come alive, doesn't it? And it brought the eyelid down for me so that I could add some color to the top. So that was my phone. <laughs> Perfect place to stop, right? And uh, here I'm adding some tiny little eyelashes to the bottom and I crisscross them. Every other little lash, I kind of make an X because our eyelashes don't go straight down. They kind of crisscross one another. And um, here I'm taking, you know, doing my ear behind the corrugated board. And I wasn't sure of the look I wanted here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the face, but you're not even going to see the ears anyway. I never even thought of that because I'm going to add hair. So, um, yeah. And I think, I don't know if I said it before I stopped, but in the eyes, like not where the eyeball is, but the other areas, if you take like a pink, a blue, a yellow, and a white, you can get them to um, a natural color because... Your eyes aren't, you know, naturally, they're more on the pink tone, pink white, than they are any other color. You know, they're not, definitely not pure white. So that's what I did and to just, I didn't want the whites just popping off there. And if you add enough color to all the other places, it'll make that look white. And I'm taking the Prisma white here, and I wanted to really make the eyebrow distinctive. Uh, I love the way Jane did the placement for that and you get to work with the nose I think I darkened it up a bit too much there on the left because it really pulls the eyeball in you know so it looks too far in if you don't put any dark up there I think it would help with that because you could make the eye you know come across and then add some white to the uh, to the peak of it if that makes any sense to you. Uh, it didn't to me as I just said it. But anyway, I just went along uh, trying to, you know, have some free relaxed time and color and paint and all the rest of it. The beauty of a mixed media piece, I think, is that it relaxes the person doing it. It takes away the perfection. It makes you... Uh, not want to be so precise because everything around it is so free form and why not make the face just as free form and don't strive for perfectionism because it's not going to come really i mean in time it will i guess if you have enough practice and you know you enjoy the process of doing facial 
facial features and things like that. But, um, you know, if you don't get enough practice in, uh, you do struggle, I do, with uh, wanting it to be more on the natural realism side than the mixed media freeform style. And here I was going for total relaxation and not trying to perfect anything. Just go with it. Just relax. And uh, basically, Jane's done the work for you with the stamp. You're not going to have anything out of alignment. You know, uh, just put the kind of a face form you want along it and then have some fun. I think you're really going to enjoy these stamps. And here, uh, I didn't know quite how much to leave in and how much to take out, you know, when I was doing the edit for you. I certainly strive to make sure that you enjoy my tutorials, that, you know, you're not, uh, that we get to have interaction talking one to another. I get to know you through your comments. I certainly appreciate them. Here I'm adding the really long lashes on the end. I put a tiny few crisscrosses in the corners, but not too many. And you'll see me go back and forth. And the hair there, just ignore that hair. <laughs> I just had to see something there, uh, you know, so that I could balance the face somehow. So uh, I'm thinking, okay, am I going to do the hair with uh, inks and, um, you know, acrylic paint? I didn't quite know yet, so I just backed away. I started working on the shape of the, you know, filling in the eyes more and more because as you know, when things dry, they lighten up. And uh, so here I go once again. I'm using the blender uh, pan pastel, the white blender pan, and uh, I love it. And I love the acrylic paint to go over it so that I can get some texture in there so you don't see the ripped you know, under the nose, that ripped sheet of paper, it's not as evident. I don't mind seeing it because it is mixed media. But, you know, I'm just trying to cake the stuff on, as they say, when you do makeup. And uh, I added more darkness to the nostrils there. And uh, then I'm going to go in and uh, I just sat and worked at this. And I loved the challenge of not having a picture in front of me, just kind of making my own person and doing my own shading and what I thought would look best. And she has kind of a, a little bit of an attitude there. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of funny because I guess I could have opened the mouth up or added more to the corners and that, but I just left it. I thought it was kind of cute. And here's where all of everything changed. I had this huge spool of cord this cotton cording. And I thought, why not add this great big bulk of thick dimension, that texture, onto this. And I had so much fun because over the last week, I have been, I'll share this with you, I've been concentrating on why sometimes it seems so hard when you have a craft room, you have some product, but yet you struggle with going in, sitting down, and putting something together. And I couldn't understand why some days I can just, I can't wait to rush in there. But the last three weeks, I would say, I've had a real problem with finding, um, you know, just knowing what to sit down and do. And to get that excitement in the crafting back, uh, the joy that, life seems to grab from you, especially being a woman and having, you know, all these obligations that we do have. Even though I am retired, I do have more time, but still you can't devote all your hours in the craft room. So you do want to spend the time you do go in there wisely, I think, especially because I do tutorials and I want to make sure my mind is always thinking that I hope the viewer will be get some inspiration from what I'm putting up. And that's just my goal. It's not to strive to do things perfect. It's to strive to make you, the viewer, uh, have, you know, you're taking your time to view this. This is your quality time that you're giving to me. 
And I so appreciate that. I can't even put into words how much I appreciate your comments, your subscription to my channel, everything. I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart that um, it gives me joy. It's not that. It's not the obligation of having to put a tutorial up. It's the inspiration to carry on so that you are inspired as well. So if I don't have inspiration and I don't show natural joy with what I'm doing, it's going to transfer onto my viewer. And I don't want that. So I'm really excited I got my inspiration back. And I'm going to share a little something with you later on on this uh, piece here as we progress. As I'm putting my uh, noodles down here, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, it looks like a colander of spaghetti whole wheat noodles fell on her head as I'm, you know, as it's getting thicker and thicker. And I will pull the camera in in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I can't believe I didn't look at the uh, lens to see that I wasn't in the frame. But I'm putting a part in her hair over to the, more to the right as you're looking at it. So I'm making a line, this is so funny, and I'm cutting off these strands of beautiful cotton string, you know, more of on the twine side, but it's beautiful cotton. I got this at a thrift store, um, one of my, you know, thrift store shops. There we go. And um, yeah, I had to rip up some of the glue because I didn't get there in time with the, uh, with the strand. <laughs> So I had to take it off so I could add more hot glue. And here, believe it or not, I sat there and put each strand in there individually. And when I got finished, I thought to myself, Carol, why aren't you just putting it around your hand? You know, like I'll show you what I did. Like go around and around and around and around, around until you get it as thick as you want. Cut it off and lay it out. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that, you know? It's just, I guess I just wanted to torture myself. I don't know. But I'm going single, you know, just putting them down there. And the reason why I went to the twine with all of the waves in it so I could get this texture, because um, I thought of this quote. Now, I claimed it. I put my name to it because I haven't seen this quote anywhere. It was something that I, it just came to my head about inspiration. I was thinking on it for days and days. What is inspiration? What is this thing that some days we are just filled with it, you know, and other days it's not there. And I kept pondering that. And as I was making this, this, um, this thought that I had, uh, and I'm going to write it down. I'm going to put it down with final letters onto mulberry paper. And this is what I think inspiration is. This is how it comes to us. Inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Isn't that funny? That's what I thought of. As I was putting these waves in her hair, I thought of that. I thought thought of inspiration because it comes and it goes and it's like uh, you know I pictured the sea and how the waves roll back and it doesn't mean you're never going to get a wave again when the water is calm it is all of a sudden that the waves come in sometimes it's in huge uh, you know tsunami type waves it just comes on you and you're so inspired you can't wait to get to your room and start to create wherever it is you create you know on a table uh dining room wherever and some days that wave doesn't come in it's just not there and does that mean it's not going to come of course not it will come in time but circumstances take over and we lose that inspiration and you know we always have a zeal to create because artists we just have that you can't not create but it's you want to be in the right frame of mind and be inspired when you are creating and I thought of that and that's that's it in a nutshell one little sentence 
that I put down and claimed as my own. <laughs> so if you thought of this, or it is your quote, you know, nothing is new under the sun, uh, just let me know in the comments. Because <laughs> I did put my name to it on this, and I thought, inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. It's still there. It's still going to come in. You just have to wait for it. And when it comes, you have so much more fun and relaxation when it's there than to sit down and do work when you're not inspired. I don't know. That's kind of helped me for some reason as I'm putting my noodles down on this poor woman's head. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that the tutorial was a little bit fast. There I am wrapping it around my hand. Look at that. And how easy peasy is that? If you're going to do a noodle head like this, you're going to make hair texture with uh, twine, wrap it around your hand a hundred times, <laughs> well, at least 15, and then look it. You can put it on so quickly. Can you believe I sat there and did it one strand at a time? Make no wonder my inspiration went south or west or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, yes, it was so funny when all of a sudden that clicked, eh? It's just one of those things. And notice that I'm putting all the waves in there because inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. Boy, I sure hope that is my quote. Wouldn't that be awesome? I know somebody's going to find it in a book or something. I probably, I don't know. I just thought it was my original. So, uh, yeah, help me. <laughs> just... Just make me believe that it was my thought, okay? You know, don't bust my bubble there. So here I'm going over the letters, the life. I, I just filled that in. Uh, you're not going to see it. I just lifted up the noodles and put it in there. And then I'm going to go over the black filigree there underneath her chin. And as I'm looking at this, you know, it kind of, this kind of uh, string thing grows on me on you it's growing on me but I didn't want it to be so white because then it made the face look so dark but yet I like the way the corrugated board and the face kind of offset one another um, yeah and here I'm just adding in little and then trying to get as many of those letters I don't know why because they're covered up and um, you know this kind of work isn't for everybody like I understand that. I know, you know, some of my friends. Oh, thinking of friends. Tina, my friend Tina, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Tina. Uh, I just hope you had a real blessed special day. <laughs> it's starting to get a little late. So, uh, yeah, I've been working on this edit thing for a while. I think I was grabbing some of the hot glue strands I could see. And now I'm putting in those beautiful black lashes. I just love the 60s look of this, these eyes. Um, yeah, especially this one I'm working on for some reason. It just, I don't know, brings back time. You know when you did have eyelids? <laughs> it's so funny when you put your makeup on that. You know, I'm 63 and, uh, you know, when you're 23, you have all of this space to work with, and as you get older, your your lids disappear for some reason. <laughs> or your eyes do. I don't know what it is. But anywho, let's get off that topic, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, Tina, you made me think of my age there. Inspiration is like the sea. Now, let me tell you what I put that on with. These are stickers I bought about four years ago at the stationery store. They're vinyl stickers. And if you tear off a piece of mulberry paper, you can see through the mulberry paper. I placed it on my grid mat there, and perfect placement. You can see right through mulberry paper. So I was able to put these perfectly on there, and I didn't want to cover up too much of the head, so I had to put inspiration is like the, and then C is way over to the right, and then it comes in waves was underneath, just so... You see, there's the C. I will put it into frame in just a minute. So here I'm just spraying down the mulberry paper quickly with water so that I'm able to form it later on. And you'll see that. 
And I took my Copics, if you can believe it, and I was going to Copic color all of that uh, hair. But uh, anyway, here's the vinyl letters I got at the stationery store. You can pick them up almost. They're called Easy Letters, vinyl letters, and they work wonderfully, and they're made for different uh, materials. So uh, here I got out three to four, I think it's three different, four. It was two Lindy Stamp Gang Browns tones and two of the Tim Holtz sprays. Uh, so I'm working with that. So first I put on the light. I wanted to make it in the browns. So you just have to cover up your face, right? You don't want to lose that. Uh, get anything on there after you worked at it. And then I'm just spraying because it's cotton and it absorbs beautifully. And now I'll cover the whole face. And to get the waves on it, you just add the color, leave about a uh, quarter of an inch. Just spray and leave a little bit. Spray down about a quarter of an inch. And like just like I'm doing on the right side there. And as it dries, it, it gives you that waved texture look. And it's just easy peasy. The whole project actually. And if you want to get rid of twine, this is the perfect thing to do. <laughs> just make hair out of it, right? So, um, I had this uh, Martha Stewart washi tape. It is sticky on one side. You, it's a peel back washi and it had filigree on it. So I cut it on a slant there so it would fit perfectly underneath the variegated board. And I put that on that side and then I went over and added some to the right hand side. Right there, there's the C. And um, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's unusual, yes but it's exactly how I felt when I created it. Uh, and, it, it, you know, with uh, it's exactly what I wanted to do, you know. Uh, when I saw that great big roll of uh, twine, it was perfect. Here I'm adding the dark tones, and you'll be amazed when you see the pictures at the end, how it did tone, like, tone down, and then it did look like waves in it, because you're adding three different colors. So I went around just adding the color that I use in the hair to uh, different places on the spread. So I put it on the mulberry paper and I took my fingers and I was able to just make little marks, you know, in the paper. It was, uh, and here I'm adding Nouveau. It's almost like a glossy accent and it's very, very sticky. And what I do, did, I don't know if I show you here, but I lay it down and then when it's a little bit tacky, I take my uh, wash brush, the, the face cloth there, because it has texture, and I wipe it. Look at the glitter in those lips. Oh boy, that's 60s, isn't it? And uh, when you tap it, the eyes as well, I put it in the eyes. I think I'm going to back up and slow this down. I want you to see how much glitter the Nouveau Crystal Clear um, liquid has. And I'm tapping the texture of the face cloth into the eyes and the lips. But the lips came out, look at this sparkle in the lips. Have you ever seen anything like that? Watch. Oh yeah. Come on Carol. Hold that up. There. Isn't that amazing? It's just like the 60s. <laughs> it, goes, it goes with the eyes, doesn't it? And uh, here I'm just spraying more dark into the mulberry paper. And then when it's wet, you can take your fingernail and just, there's the mulberry paper that I used. It's pink actually, you'd never know it. And I just took my nail and scraped the top and the bottom of the mulberry paper to add a little bit more texture. Inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. And right underneath the word sea, I wrote my name and the date. So, so I could claim it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, isn't it? But anyway, I added some more of the beautiful turquoise uh, dollar store paint that was $2. And um, I added it just thick enough that you could see it. I put it on the corrugated board across her forehead for a reason. And you'll see that in just a little bit. I hope this tutorial inspired you in some way. And I want to thank each one that took the time, the actual 46 minutes and 35 seconds to view this. It means a lot to me. And um, 
Yeah, inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. And I'm going to sign my name right now. There it is. And I'm going to date it <laughs> and put it up in the corner. Now, here's where my inspiration rolled in like a tidal wave. Why not take a Heidi Swap, swap clip, and it's gold. You can't have too much gold on anything, right? And use it to hang as a hanger on this mixed media spread. So I took two of them, one for each side, of course, and I'm going to place them and don't pull back the, uh, the clips yet. Just pinch one on one side and one on the other. And here I get to use my, uh, you know, more of my perfectionism that I have in me when I do art. I don't have a lot of it, but I do have some and I'm measuring just to make sure they're even. It's the only thing I worried about was the lettering and the gold clips, that they were, you know, somewhat pleasing to the eye. Then I cut off some of the twine. I'm gonna run it through the side pan right there. I'm gonna clip it right there, then clip the clips down first, right? And then run it through or vice versa. Tie it in a knot right there and look at that. You have a hanger, you don't even know it. It just looks like clips on the side. Oh, I was so thankful that my inspiration is kicking in. The tidal wave is coming. Now, after I put those two little turquoise dots down on the bottom, I wanted to braid. I wanted a braid to be in her hair. It's 60s, right? You have to have a braid on the side of your hair. I can remember doing that, like just braiding one section of my hair and on one side. I thought it was so cool. And then you tie it with uh, uh, wool ties, all colored different wool ties in a bow. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think that was more in the 80s though for me. Uh, 70s maybe? Yeah, more 70s. So here I tied the strands. I, I think I did 12 and uh, let me see, two, four, six, seven. And then I tied it in a knot and then I separated them to make the braids, right, in three different sections. So it was thick enough. You can do it, you know, as thick as you would like for your piece if you do something like this. It has the beautiful knot on the top. And then I had those roses that I got for Mother's Day hanging up, the dried ones. And in it was this beautiful baby's breath. And it was so, you know, this whole 60s thing was coming together. My uh, inspiration tidal wave was coming in and working for me. <laughs> oh yeah, it all has to flow together, right? Flow like the sea. Yes, I'm sorry about that, but I'm not going to stop again. I just got an email. But anywho, so any, I, I don't know why I'm pressing it there because there's no glue there. I'm just, I guess, seeing if it's going to sit there properly. So I take it off. I add some hot glue. I grab my roses because I want to get the perfect leaf. And uh, dried flowers and dried leaves are absolutely beautiful to work with in any pieces, whether it be cards, mixed media, canvases, whatever. They are gorgeous. They, they really do stand the test of time. So if you find any or you have any to dry just in a little cup, a bowl, whatever, You'll love using them in your mixed media, so um, or projects, I should say, right? So here's where the glue comes into play, and I put that on the side, and it's so 60s, and I really did, even taking the 60s out of it, I love the element that we started out with that cotton, beautiful cotton twine and that spool of it. So I wanted to have that naturally put into the tutorial just to show me that that's where the beginning stage was with the hair. And then right next to me was this wreath and it was turquoise. All the little wee raindrops were spray painted turquoise on this beautiful twigs, on these beautiful twigs. Beautiful wreath, isn't it? So I just took some, I put a piece in there with the leaf and the baby's breath. And then the corrugated board, that's why I didn't mind putting some of the turquoise paint across there. I knew, I looked over and saw that wreath and I knew I was going to take the twigs off of it. 
As always, my friends, thank you very much for taking your time and spending it with me. I do appreciate it. And um, like the quote says, that inspiration is like the sea. It comes in waves. Don't worry about it if you find that you can't, uh, you know, your inspiration is just not there. It'll come. It'll come. And it did for me, and I'm really, really pleased that um, I was able to share this tutorial when it did come. <laughs> so have yourself a blessed weekend, and I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment. If you liked it, a like. You know all the things that we do on YouTube. And tell a friend about my channel if you wish. That would be wonderful. Take care and enjoy these pictures. <laughs>